After nearly three decades covering the Buffalo Bills, this guy knows what he's talking about. Welcome to Sal Speak, the place to be for hard-hitting analysis from Sal Majorana of the Democrat and Chronicle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sal Speak. I'm Sal Majorana, and I'm with the DNC Sports columnist Leo Roth, and we're here to talk about the Buffalo Bills and uh, a Week Four matchup against the New England Patriots. Uh, the annual trip to the House of Horrors at Gillette Stadium. But Leo, we've got some good news to talk about on this podcast, on this live Facebook show um, for the first time this year. Yeah, they you played, were wrong, so you picked them, you were wrong. I know, I'm always wrong. They played, <laughs> so was I. They played a really good game last week against Arizona in a, in a game that I think you and I and most of Western New York, um, the media at least, felt they had no chance not only to, yeah. not, to not win, but even be competitive against that team. And they blew the, they blew the doors right off. Yeah. I mean, look, in, in, in hindsight, we, you know, we probably should have been a little, bit more, a little bit more reserved in this regard. And we've seen this before, and maybe we forgot it. We forgot our history lessons. But you know what? Talk about it. I think Las Vegas got it right because people were wondering because the line was so small. Right. But, you know, you got a team traveling uh, from the, from the you know, couple, couple time zones. you got a team at home that's really, really desperate for a win 0-2. Um, and we've seen quarterbacks come in that are, are good quarterbacks and not play well mm -hmm. at, in Orchard Park. Um, you know, it all came together. And I do give, you know, at least for a week, I mean, Rex Ryan had the pulse on his team. Um, you know, certainly throwing a coordinator under the bus, <laughs> yeah. whatever friendship they might have had. Obviously, it wasn't a very good one, <laughs> strong one at least. Um, it worked for a week. We have a long way to go. Yep. And like you mentioned, they got to go to they got to go to Foxborough. Yeah. So we all know what happens down there. What one and thirteen, at at Gillette Stadium. Right. I mean, it was it was very impressive last week. They did a lot of things well. Um, the offense wasn't great, but they did enough. Lashawn McCoy had a nice day. I thought the offensive line really blocked well on a day when they had to. They had to control the line of scrimmage in that game to have any chance. Uh, once we knew that Sammy Watkins wasn't going to play, you figured there wasn't going to be much of a passing attack, Leo. So I really thought that the plan that they made, and who knows how much impact Anthony Lynn really had. I didn't notice a whole lot different in that offense. It might have moved a little quicker. They mixed a little bit of mm -hmm. no huddle in. They ran that one really cute option play that Taylor went 49 yards for. But I think what the key to that game was is they had an attitude. They had a mindset that they had to run the ball. They knew it. Yeah. And they did a really good job. We'll talk about defense after, but give me your impression of the first week of this Anthony Lynn offense. Yeah, well, I, I, immediately after the game, I, and I wrote, um, you know, did, did Lynn do anything that Greg Roman would not have right. done? I, I doubt it. I mean, you know, we talked about, oh, they really ran the ball well. Hmm, what, how, how, how short are our memories? <laughs> Greg Roman produced the number one running, uh, running team in the NFL last year. Yep. He, he was committed to running the ball. He was doing what, what, what Rex wanted. Um, the ground and pound. He mixed in a lot of runs for Taylor. He had LaShawn at times uh, at, at working at a high level. Um, there's no doubt that I think Greg Roman, because he was here a year and he was trying to make, take this offense somewhere else, trying to make it evolve a little bit. Maybe that's human nature. We try to get a little bit more, take it a little bit to another level and maybe that was a mistake. Maybe, you know, and I, I think I mentioned this last week. I said, I mean, I did ask Greg Roman when, in, in his waning days. I said, having a quarterback like Tyrod Taylor a, mul uh, a multiple, uh, uh, you know, a running threat and a passing threat, is that a, he goes, it's a blessing. Maybe it's also a curse because you, yeah. you're trying to figure out what to do with this guy. And I think it, maybe that was Greg Roman's mistake. And it was only two games. Right. So I, I really don't want to well, know. Well, they'll say it was 18 you know. games. They'll say this goes they'll, back to last year. He had 18 games yeah. to mold Tyrod Taylor and, and it didn't work. So. And I do know they were, I mean, communication was an issue. Somehow they weren't getting things in quick enough. And that clearly the tempo picked up. I thought so. And, 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 and McCoy mentioned this afterwards is that he, he loved that he was, a little, he was taking a little deeper, deeper uh, sets with those wildcat plays. And right. that allowed him to, to look around a little bit. So clearly it ran a little, it ran better. And, but again, I'm, I'm sure you'll mention that, you know, passing wise, I mean, 119 yards. Yeah. That's nothing to it's go not good crazy enough. about. And they, of course, they didn't have uh, Watkins. So, and, 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 and again, with, with Sammy, it's a week to week thing. So, yeah. hey, we'll see going down here. I mean, they're on the road now. They're not going to have the crowd noise. They're going to have Billichek on the other sideline. Mm -hmm. We'll see, you know, Anthony Lynn. Hey, you, you, we, now we, it's on. You're, face, you're facing on. Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. I thought the passing game, Leo, was again very 
uh, very sophomoric. They, they just don't have, um, I, and again, I know they're missing Sammy Watkins, but you go back to the first two games, he didn't do anything anyways. He wasn't yeah. really a part of the offense. They didn't have Greg Salas. Say what you want about Greg Salas. That's still their third receiver, and that made them dip down all the way to Walter Powell and Brandon Tate. Brandon Tate was signed as a punt returner three right. weeks ago. He's running pass routes on Sunday afternoon. So their passing game right now is basically almost at an infancy stage, and that's going to be a problem moving forward until Sammy Watkins can get healthy and get back out there. And it's going to raise big problems this week because you know Bill Belichick does every week. He will find the opponent's mm -hmm. strength, take that away, and make you beat him with something else. And clearly, so, the strength is LaShawn McCoy in the ground game. Yeah, right and now. if they can't rely on a pass game, Leo, it's going to be a tough, tough day down in uh, if you take If they take McCoy out and he's just going nowhere, and, and you don't have, you know, and you, and you don't have uh, Carlos Williams anymore for, right. for the uh, change-up pitch, um, you know, they're not using Reggie Bush at all. I no. don't know why he's on the roster. I'm not sure either. Um, so, yeah, and then you're looking at this passing game. Tyrod Taylor, you know, can't work from the pocket. You have a, a receiving core that scares no one, mm -hmm. even with Sammy Watkins. <laughs> it scares really, no one. At this point. And you're talking about arguably the, the, the greatest coach in NFL history, yep. history on their side. So I think Bill Belichick has seen a little bit, you know, uh, he's seen a guy named uh, Peyton Manning a few times and yeah. did okay. I, I mean, think he can handle Tyrod I, I think he can handle Tyrod. Well, let's talk about the defense, because last week, um, and there, was, there was a big emphasis last week, because Rex Ryan's defense was obliterated in that Jets game. Ryan Fitzpatrick, who followed that up with one of the worst games in NFL history, but the week before played one of the best games of his career for sure, um, the defense needed to bounce back. They really were awful in that Thursday night game, and I thought against an offense, that we all thought was dynamic from top to bottom. Yeah. Really good quarterback, uh, one of the best running backs in the league in David Johnson, all those receivers. Hall of Fame receiver. You're thinking, how are the Bills <laughs> gonna stop these guys? Well, they stopped him because Rex Ryan almost went back to his roots and remembered that he really can be a good defensive coach. They cooked up that scheme that had at times only one or two defensive linemen. They flooded the field with seven DBs and they really had Palmer confused. Yeah really all day long. He never really figured out how, how to attack that Buffalo defense. Five or four interceptions and five sacks. About as good as the defense can play. About as good. And that was the, that was the difference. Um, uh, it, it wasn't Anthony Lynn. It wasn't the move no. to fair. That was an incredible defensive performance. It's got a rate in, the, in, the, in Rex's top 10. And, you know, like you said, they did some things. And they also had 10 days to prepare, Sal. And that, that was obviously... Which, by the way, Belichick has this week. <laughs> there you go. Right, <laughs> right. That, that, excellent point. Yeah. And um, he, he would need about 10 minutes. He doesn't I, need 10 I days. Know, right. Um, but, but Rex, did, get, Rex did, did some things. And I also like that he, you know, and afterwards he did talk about how he involved uh, Dennis Thurman. He involved his brother, Rob. And they, they had a lot of good communication going. And they seemed to have... He talked about how he seemed to... You know, Rex seemed to be more of the... You know, it's funny. Rex seemed to be more of the whether it was talking about the offense this week or the he seemed to be more of he seemed to be more uh, uh, more of a head coach this uh, coming well, off of that said, game. He claimed than, he was. Yeah, I think he I think he's you know delegating more maybe. Maybe delegating, maybe realizing what this you know job is and um, you well, know. Gee, it only took him uh, almost eight years. He's, right? he's been at it a while. You would think he would have figured it out before um, now. But I think he's got to ease up on on the defense a little bit. Got to pay a little bit more attention to the offense. Yeah. Well, you hey, know what, Leo? You can always I, learn. I've never bought into the fact that he's not sitting in, at least on some of the offensive meetings. What head coach yeah, could he, not know what's going on on right. the offensive side? But he side? admitted his role was to uh, maybe raise a point if, if, if well, they, they would use Rex as a sounding board. What do you think of that, Rex? I understand that, standpoint? but you've got to be um, in tune. Like, like on, on game day, it, it, it's not Greg Rowe. It's fourth and one, and the right. Bills are deciding whether to go or punt. Rex has got to make that decision. And, and Rex, and any coach, has to make that decision. And he has to know what's in the offensive plan before he makes that decision. So I've never bought that mm -hmm. Rex is completely out well, he's of the, the offense. And, and, he and he's on the he's on the headset when they're when plays are being called and situations are being deciphered. So yes, now he, but but Rex doesn't. He's not calling the plays. No, I understand and, that, and, and he should. That. But he should be involved yeah. and know what's happening. That's yeah. why I, I, the point at, the yes. point I'm making is I've never bought into. I let those guys just I, do their thing right, and I stay he, out of the way. Baloney, that he had he's no, the head coach. That he, that he had no handle at all on it. I don't right. believe that either. Now, but we have seen coaches. Look at Chan Gailey. As good as an offensive mind he was, he had no defense in Buffalo. What was no. the situation there? Again, you were wondering, you know, sometimes if you let, you kind of goes back, the, you know, the, 
you know, Marv Levy, how he was a special teams guy and how he, he was the, he was the ultimate delegator. He was he the was. ultimate CEO. He knew how to handle it Marv all, hired it all good, together. He hired good people and trusted them to do their yeah. job. But in the end, he was the overseer. Mm -hmm. Marv was the overseer and he had control over every aspect. If they were going to go on third and one, I'm sure. He yeah. had control he, of every he aspect yes no and called it. of that team. Yeah. All right, let's answer a couple quick questions here while we're on Facebook. Um, Brian Orr has sent a bunch in, and he's really he's sent four, and they all are tied into the offensive line. Um, he wanted to know, he said he thought the O-line had trouble blocking in past situations. How many sacks did they give up last week? And I can't recall offhand how many sacks. I think it might have been two. But I don't, I don't recall him being under no. tremendous duress in this game. Now, he only dropped back 25 times, or 27 with the two sacks, I think. He wasn't throwing the ball a whole lot. But I thought the offensive line did a good job. And that's a really good Arizona front line and really front seven. So I can't, yeah. I can't kill the offensive line. I don't know what, no, not, not I don't know what Brian protection. was seeing last week, but I thought it was a good job. Yeah, maybe um, the, I, I agree uh, there was probably some pre lot, there was some pressure, not a lot of sacks, but right. there was probably some, you know, he, he was flushed a little bit. I don't think he was ever comfortable. He never, he never really, I'm trying to think, there was some, there was some deep, there was a couple of deep throws. Um, you know, the, the, the offensive line's uh, claim last week was the run game, yep. and, and, and they did a great job at that. And well, they had, that is their strength. What, they, Rich, what Richie Incognito had said was in the first two games, they weren't sustaining drives, and that meant the offensive line yeah. couldn't stay out there for six, seven, eight plays, and then you start wearing on a defensive line and a defense, and they didn't have that opportunity in the first two games. I thought in this game they did have that, that chance to get out there, establish themselves, you know, yeah. have an attitude, and it worked out pretty well for the Bills. 208 yards rushing in the game. Yeah, and that's got to, That's why they have to go back to. So I mean, that's you know, and, and if you and if you look at you know look at the, what the Patriots have, have been able to accomplish in going three and all without Tom Brady. Obviously, they're running the ball. I, I think they've you know they've they've got they're leading the league. I think right now 108 uh, run calls. I think to like maybe like 80 pass calls. Clearly, they know the commitment. It's not rocket science. And and of course, Blunt is running really well for them. Right. And. You know, I, that is still, you know, obviously Buffalo's got to do, they have to be a better passing team, but it's going to go back to the run. It's going to, yeah. and it's going to run through. I understand. Sean the bread and butter is the, is the run game, but they've got to start finding the way to be complimentary on offense or they're going to be in trouble. Now, Gregory Paul wants to know, he, well, he says, it's a perfect segue for us too. He talked about, this is a good test. Um, if Buffalo comes back with a win, is the season saved? This is a topic we were going to get to. Do you think, last, when, when, after the Jets game, before uh, the Cardinals game, you and I both said that they're already in a big, big hole here. 0-2, yeah. they'd have to win 10 of their last 14 to even sniff the playoffs and do that against a really tough schedule this year. Now, this win was a real feel-good day for the Bills, but the bottom line, Leo, is they're 1-2, and two, and now they have to win 9 of their last 13. So, you know, not a whole lot has changed. So as far as saving a season, that 0-2 hole they dug is going to be very difficult to get out of. I'll say this, it was a feel uh -huh. good win, and if they can back it up with a win in New England, again, I still think the odds are pretty long, but it's a whole different feeling about oh. the season. If you go two and two in the first quarter absolutely. after the start they had, there's a little different feeling about the team moving forward, agree? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree, and it was a team that was in a bit of a, a crisis of, of confidence, no doubt. They had to have that, that, that win picks, picks them up uh -huh. uh, exponentially. What, what a win in New England would do would just move that needle even more. But like you said, they're 500 after four games. They're not three, three and one. Right. Um, they're not four and all. Oh. But, but certainly two and two. But what are we talking about? Is this a 500 football team? Hey, you know what? I, I'll, you know, I have the Bills finishing eight and eight this year, and that was with a two and oh start. And I figured they'd be two and two at the quarter pole. So it might end up in a roundabout way. They might end up in the same place I thought. I don't think it's going to happen. I think New England's going to win the game. But if they should win the game, I would have to say this is where I thought they'd be after four games, two and two. Yeah. That's what I felt it would be. But still, I don't have that feeling. I don't have that good feeling but that they it, can take it but, forward. But, but we all know record, you know, uh, there, are, there are different two and twos. Right. And there are, this would know, be a unique two and this two. This is a good them. two and two because they started so right. poorly. They, they, they lost and to the two teams they should have beaten. Yeah. And they, if they end up beating the two teams they should have lost to. And it will give them, uh, you know, then they got to go out to, to the Rams. Right. Um, so Which won't be easy, by the way. That's not going to be easy. Even Everyone's talking about, oh, get through these two and then you no, get no, the Rams. No, no, no. It doesn't get easy. The schedule is <laughs> exactly. demanding. The, the travel is demanding after this. And it's going to be, yeah. So, But this is, yeah, because 
you know, one and three doesn't sound a whole lot. Uh, no, it really doesn't. <laughs> doesn't sound real good either, does it, no. after four games? Let's get one more question here while we've got him. Uh, Mike Weber wants to know, does Watkins end up on the IR before Halloween? Now, oh. I don't know about IR for the season, but I talked about this just a little while ago on the radio. We, we, this, this came up. What do you do with Sammy Watkins? Now, I've seen the tweets today from Buffalo. Obviously, I'm not there. I'm here. But he wasn't on the field for the second day in a row at practice. They're practicing right now as we, as we record this. Um, if he's not practicing yet, I'll tell you what, I don't see him playing Sunday. And I think the Bills, Leo, it might be the smart thing with this injury. He has had, a tr he has had problems, obviously, with the pain, which is why he sat out mm -hmm. last week. They ought to just shut him down for maybe a month. And hopefully, because he's got to have his feet. He's a wide receiver. He's got to have his feet feeling good. His legs are very important. And his feet, because of the position he plays, maybe they shut him down for a month. Maybe. I wouldn't put him on IR. But, I mean, if you got a no, knee injury, I, I, but, I mean, for this, maybe sit him down for three or four weeks, and maybe it heals, and you've got him the whole second half of the year. They're not going to IR him. That's, that would be, no, I no think way. they would, he's too valuable. They, they'll, they'll, nurse, they'll nurse him through all the way. The only time that I would see him on IR is if they're, at what, at what stage Completely are they out, out of, of the, it, if right. they're out of the playoffs. Right. Um, they have to hope he's back. They get him health, healthy. But rest is, it sounds like rest is the only thing that's going to work for Sammy Watkins at this point. It's disappointing, too, and because he had this surgery way back in the spring, yeah. and they really coddled him. He didn't do anything in the spring workouts. He really didn't do a whole lot in the training camp or preseason, and you just felt like, well, geez, he's had all that time off. He should be good to go, and he, you could see it in week one. He really wasn't 100%, and he hasn't been, and that's why he set out the week three game. He keeps talking about how he feels pretty good. but Yeah. Feeling, but he's not. O feeling okay and then playing a football game are yeah, different things. Totally different things. And obviously the, the strain and the, and the stress. And then, like you said, he didn't go yesterday and he's not going today. No, I don't um, think he's going today's to play. A big, today's a big day. These, these two days are the big uh, prep days. It's, uh, it's not looking good. Not that, not that he can't feel okay yeah, Sunday he, he could go out Sunday there. morning. It'll be a game time decision, yeah. you know, but I, I'm just not feeling good about it. All right, let's, let's transition into speaking about guys who are, who are hurt. Um, Tom Brady's four-game suspension, uh, one more week, it's this week, and the Patriots have two quarterbacks right now who were both hurt. They lost Jimmy Garoppolo uh, late in the first half of the week two game. He was playing great. He was lighting the Dolphins up, and he got sacked, not sacked, he got hit and by Kiko Alonso, our old buddy from <laughs> Buffalo, and hurt his shoulder, so he sat out the week three game. Jacoby Brissett, who's a third-round draft pick rookie, uh, went in and started against Houston last Thursday night. Um, really did nothing, but the defense was great, and they won the game. But in that game, he hurt his thumb. Yeah. Finished the game with it, but now the Patriots come into this game against Buffalo, and there's a complete mystery as to who will play quarterback. And, and Rex kind of joked about it yesterday. He kind of said, like, well, it, it might be more difficult to prepare for two guys, but it's a whole lot better than preparing for Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. so he's glad that Brady's not going to be the guy, but really, between Garoppolo and Brissett, they're not 100% sure. Rex claims he has a good idea. We'll see if he's right or not. But they don't have a quarterback right now today that yeah. you know is going to start. Is that an advantage for the Bills in any way, do you think, or no? You know what? I, I, I have so much respect for Bill Belichick. I don't know if what, what's, the, what's the advantage of not knowing who the quarterback is. Right. Um, you I know, mean, Rex, Rex claims they're, they're, they're going to yeah. prepare for the Patriots' offense. That's what they're going to have to yeah. do. But those two guys are different players. They really are. Yes. And, but they're a system. They're, they're a, right. a systems offense. You know they're going to do some things that they always like. They're not going to tailor some brand new thing because it's Garoppolo or, or Brissett. And I tell you what, I'm thinking it's Garoppolo because he's, he's, I guess yesterday he was throwing the ball in the 25, 30 yard range. Right. It's Which all, could have all been for show. It might have when been. When the media was out there let them, let, them, let them tweet it out. Let, right. it, let it get it out there. You know what? You know, but as we know, you don't in this in that offense. You don't throw it. You don't throw it seventy yards anyway. That's right. You don't. So, um, if he can operate, if he can operate it, get the running game going, play their great defense. I think, you know, that's Belichick's plan. He's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be. I don't think it's going to be Julian Edelman. I mean, that's been no, Rex's that was, big joke all week. Silly, he's, yeah. he's looking for that. Um, but, you know, they, hey, these guys couldn't have been uh, – I don't think Garoppolo was too far away because, like you mentioned earlier, they, they would not have – they would have brought in a quarterback yeah, to get him through somebody. this game. Yep. Somebody that's, you know – so I think you're going to – I, th I think it's going to be uh, Garoppolo, and he's a good player. Yeah, he's, he is uh, a good He's player. not a uh, – you know, he's a second-round pick. 
uh, record-setting uh, uh, player for uh, for uh, Syracuse coach Dino Babers uh, mm -hmm. uh, back at Eastern Illinois. So he's a good. I, I tell you, you know, he's. he's I'm gonna tell you. I'd rather see Brissett. Is, yeah. If I'm the Bills, I'd rather see Brissett. If I'm if I'm a New England fan, though, I'm telling you what. I don't care if you know, they're they're going to if they go, if they're if they lose and they're three and one at the quarter pole, they've done their job. They getting Brady back. I mean, look how look how uh, you know look how well they're sitting after this one month, and, yeah. and it was the big oh my god, you know Brady should have done this a year ago and got it out of the way uh, with the with the flake gate. <laughs> but you know, hey, what can you say about the Patriots now? Uh, five, you know, they've been a way to overcome everything. They've been they you I mean five, five AFC title games in a row yeah. um, for for a team that you're just waiting. When's it going to be the year that they just fall off the map? And it just doesn't happen. They yeah. just get stronger and I used better. A, um, I used a quote in my story today. Uh, I wrote about um, the Patriots quarterback situation, Josh McDaniels, that talked to the media in Boston on Monday. And he was asked about, you know, how have you done this with these two quarterbacks? You've won three games with two different guys. Uh, neither one of them have really done anything in the NFL. And he just said, we have adversity, but nobody ever thinks of it as adversity. Yeah. They just, it's just another day in the NFL, and you deal with it, and they always find a way. That's, so the Bills have adversity all the time, and very <laughs> often do not overcome it. The Patriots do, don't, do don't even consider it adversity. They just consider yeah. it life in the NFL, and you find a way to get it done, and they do time and time again. Let's talk about real quick before we go. I wanted to mention a couple players for you. Um, Zach Brown, mm -hmm. Buffalo Bills uh, inside linebacker, this guy is tied for the league, uh, lead league in tackles with 34. Yeah. This guy they signed from Tennessee was supposed to be a backup and a special teams player. And because of the Reggie Ragland injury, this guy's playing great. I mean, yeah, but he was, you who know, was this guy? No, he, he, was, he was a very good player. All I remember him is he's the guy who hurt Tyrod Taylor last year when he played for the Titans. He's a very, but he was a very good player for the Titans. And I thought it was a great, uh, it was a great signing when they, when they got him. And he was... Because they didn't know they were going to be able to, to, to draft uh, Reggie Ragland. Right, Ragland's. this is before the Ragland So he was going to be their starter. I guess. And so they viewed him as a starter, and, the, and now he's he's. Well, he's all I know is like the one. moment they drafted Reggie Ragland, if you remember, Whaley with his comment, those guys are walking off the bus and starting. So Zach Brown well, was right. right to the back door there. But and he's coming sure, through. He's I'm sure great. Zach Brown probably uh, said, hmm, really? Yeah, I know. Why did they sign here? Well, like, really? This, this kid's better than, than I? He's a good player. Yeah. And, well, we're finding that out. And if for once the Bills – Made a nice free agent signing. Good for them. Yeah. Because, you know. They've needed this guy. They've needed players like that. Now, let's go back to uh, another signing who is not working out well, so And well. let's not forget Lorenzo Alexander. Yes. And he's given them a pass rush presence. We talked about him last week. Yes. He's been a very surprising so there's, player. Yes. On the other side, what's going on with Charles Clay? Well, I yeah. mean, this guy, $38 million for five years, which, by the way, that was an offer sheet. So the Bills had to go higher on that so Miami mm -hmm. wouldn't match it. The Dolphins basically looked at that and laughed and said, yeah, take him. We don't, you know, we're not paying that kind of money for Charles Clay. This guy, Leo, I, I know he's battling a sore knee right now, and he's also battling the fact that Tyrod Taylor does not understand what the middle of the field looks like, and that's where Clay would usually do most of his damage. But still, Leo, he had zero catches last week on two targets. I understand he was wide open on one play, and Taylor never saw him. So, again, that goes back to the Tyrod problem. Mm -hmm. But don't you need your tight end who you're paying that kind of money to do something more than that? Well, absolutely. And, I, and I've, you know, we've defended, I've defended Charles Clay before. I like him. I like him as a, you know, as a player. Oh, he's a real good guy, too. And I like him as a guy. He's yeah. a good guy. He's a stand-up guy. Solid citizen. Yeah, I like that about um, him. You know, but is he one of these guys that had a little flash with another team? Another team fell in love with him. Yeah. We got to have him. And now they don't know how to use him. Now, at some point... It's got to be on Charles Clay, too. Is he getting open? Obviously, he hasn't been 100%. Again, there were times, but there's been times where people have tweeted to me, oh, watch this open. play. Do they have that all 22, which yeah. I, I just don't subscribe to? Um, and they'll say, look, at, watch this. And you know, there he is. He is wide open. Yes. But that happens every game. Players are always open. And quarterbacks and I know it's, can't see everybody. This is maddening in the, in the going back a decade or more. I mean, it's a maddening thing for, for Buffalo Bills fans and us that watch the team every week. You see other teams just... Wow, they need a play. Um, drop back, boom, throw it to the tight end. There he is. Yeah. The Bill, they just can't seem to even have a little designed dump ball for the tight end. Every offense it's has like a good tight even, end, right? Yeah. Every high-functioning offense generally has a good tight end or, in Gronkowski's case, a great tight end. Buffalo has not had that player forever. And it really, I think, has been a problem through the years. They've never had that position really figured out. And if we thought Clay was the guy, yeah. but so far not. 
Bilicek has loved tight ends in his offenses, and you know now they got Martellus Bennett, free. Uh, uh, now they got two of them, free agent and Gronkowski. Come on, he knows how to use two of them. The Bills don't know how to use one. If you remember, um, he, at one time before Hernandez went on his murder spree, he had three. <laughs> they had three tight ends: Gronkowski, him, and I forget the other guy. They were using three guys effectively. The Bills can't use yeah. one guy. His murder spree. His murder spree. <laughs> Sorry, it's the truth. He, I, is in, he is in prison for the rest of his life. And I do want to bring that up to when everybody says, you know, the Bills had all their problems, and they go, well, look at Bil Belichick. He never has problems yeah. with players. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, there was that one guy he that murdered that one someone. Guy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Um, well, actually, Justin Hauser was just asking me about what's it going to take to get Clay involved. So, Justin, we just did answer that question. All right, Leo, we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I'm going to New England on Saturday. And, again, I'm not quite sure that the Bills yeah. have enough to get it done. I, no matter who plays quarterback for the Patriots, I still think it's going to be a tough out for the Bills. What do you think? I think it's a tough out. I, I think the, 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 you know, you can always, you can always count defensively um, uh, the, the Patriots getting it done. That's such a hard place for uh, Tyrod Taylor to go in there and think he's just going to, it's all going to fall in place. And that's going to be the play. That's going to be a tough thing. I think, you know, Rex, I got to have confidence in him and his defensive half that they're going to, they're going to make this game very close. I think it'll be a close it's game. It's going to be a close game. Um, you know, if, if, if by some act of uh, the football gods, it smiles on the Bills towards that last five minutes and where things are happening, um, that's what we're going to, you know, that's what it's probably going to take. Yeah. But otherwise, I see New England taking a close one. And if New England's 4-0, Without Tom Brady, I know. just quit. The rest of the, the season, you just the be rest quit. of the, yeah, the rest of the AFC East is just gonna. <laughs> it's gonna be this biggest sigh you've ever heard. It'll be yeah. like a hurricane. Yeah, I know. All right, folks. We hope, I hope you enjoyed this edition of uh, Sal Speak on Facebook Live. Again, I am Sal Mayorana. He is Leah Roth, and we will talk to you next week, same time, same bad channel. Have a great week and enjoy the game on Sunday.